Hey there, welcome to the 41st Easy JavaScript tutorial part of easyprogramming.net. Did you think that we were done with loops? Not yet. I had to save one until we covered JSON and custom JavaScript objects. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at something called the for in loop in JavaScript. The for in loop allows you to loop through properties of an object and its values, like how you can loop through an array using the for each loop and target both its index as well as the value. Um, you can target both the property name and the property value. Uh, so let's just go over the syntax of what the for in loop looks like. Uh, so the, you start out with the keyword for, this is something that we're familiar with, and in parentheses we will look at uh, the property, uh, you can call it whatever you want, I'm using the property keyword here, in, so in is also a reserved keyword in JavaScript, and then followed by your object variable, whatever that may be. So let's say our object uh, called person has a value of Nasmus inside the property called name. So to access uh, the property itself inside of the for in loop, you would do uh, the x or the, the, you'll assign the property uh, inside the for loop parameter as uh, the property itself. And the object, to get the value of the object, you'd have to do object and in square bracket notation, you'd do properties. Uh, in the last few tutorials, I showed you that you can access JavaScript object properties using the dot notation, uh, but when you're using the for loop, uh, it works mostly like an uh, array, that's one way to think of it, uh, is that you can only use the square bracket notation. If you use the dot notation, so if you do object dot property, uh, it will not work. So let's just do a quick practice and see what we come up with. So I declared a new object, I created a new object called person, and I assigned all of these values to it. So name, city, state, website, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and they all have these properties and they all have these values associated with them. So what we want to do is we want to output uh, pretty much what we see here into uh, plain HTML. Um, so I declared a variable called output and I assigned the element ID output, which is out here. Uh, it'll go under less practice. So let's just do it. Uh, so let's practice and see what we get. Uh, so I'm going to start with the keyword for, and inside my parentheses, I'm going to put in uh, what our property value is going to be. You can call it anything you want, but I'm going to call it p to keep it short, uh, keep it simple. In, again, in is a JavaScript reserved keyword, and the name of our object, which is called person. And in square brackets uh, and curly braces, let's do um, output dot inner in our HTML, uh, concatenate, remember how to do that. Uh, let's just output the uh, values of our properties. I'll just do a line break so that I'm being lazy here and doing it this way. Uh, just update and run. So what this did is it outputted the names of the property. So name, city, state, all the way to hands are here. Now, if you want to output the values of the property, what you need to do is you need to say object, so we'll do person, p, whoops, p. So it's going to take our object, uh, person, and use the square bracket notation to grab the property out of it. So the property, uh, so the for in loop is iterating through the property, so name, city, and it's going to grab the value of whatever that is. So let's do update and run. There you go. Now it switches to Nasmus, Boston, Massachusetts, all the way to two, because I have two hands. So as you can see, this is extremely useful in parsing through objects. So what happens if I do a dot notation, like I said before, if I update and run, I get undefined because there is no, it just doesn't work that way when you're using the for in loops. You'd have to use square brackets, P, run, and there you go. If you want to make it prettier, if you want to output, you know, what you see on your screen, uh, what's in the JavaScript object, the whole JSON thing, uh, onto HTML, we can do that way. Still, we'll do p plus whoa. Let's do this. Um, concatenating uh, the name of the property uh, with the colon space, and then concatenating the value of the property. Let's see what that looks like. There you go. Name, Nasma, City, Boston, blah blah blah. Pretty easy, right? And now, uh, one other trick that I want to show you is that the person p value here is actually uh, now a string. So what we can do is we can actually apply string methods to it. So to keep it simple, we'll just do two upper case, just to keep it a little bit simple. And what this will do is it'll just 
make everything uh, capitalized inside the values of the properties here. So if I do update and run, there you go, it capitalized everything. You can apply any string method to it because it's a string. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is that uh, you sh you'll you have uh, issues if you try to uh, parse out methods here. If you have custom methods, uh, the for and loop isn't really meant for that. It'll What it'll do is it'll just convert it to string and output uh, the code into uh, in, into the uh, HTML or wherever you're outputting. So that's not always the best thing to do. Uh, well, I hope you've learned something about the for and loop today. Uh, come back to the next tutorial where I will show you how you can use the for and loop along with the for each loop uh, to go through objects inside of an array. Um, it should be cool. Uh, it'll give you a more dynamic sense of what you can do with the for and loop. Uh, I've also been trying out a different mic for this tutorial. I hope the voice quality here is better than the last few that I've done. Let me know if you think the quality can be improved so that I can invest in another mic or if this one's okay. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the for and loop or anything I've covered so far, uh, please ask in the comments below. Thanks for sticking with me over the last 41 tutorials now. Uh, remember to visit easyprogramming.net to look at all of them, uh, as well as my C++ and my Excel tutorials and another topic coming very soon. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.